In the span of two months, former President Trump has now faced two assassination attempts. Kamala Harris breaks out a new fake accent. Plus, ABC News is under fire for its handling of the presidential debate. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with the second, yes, second assassination attempt against former President Trump in the span of just about two months. Now, if you're surprised to hear that there was a second attempt, it's probably because you forgot there was a first attempt. After all, the media want you to forget. I've never seen an event of such significance, such potentially world-altering consequences, just disappear from the public mind as quickly as the first assassination attempt on former President Trump on July 13th. The media and the governing elite seemingly want you to forget that the person they've been trying to remove through impeachment, censorship, and lawfare was almost taken out by an assassin's bullet. And now there's been another attempt. Here's the story. When you look at this map right here that you were just talking about, uh, it is surrounded by roads that go right around it and you step off the road onto the sidewalk and straight into the trees and there's a fence right there. Um, he, he picked a location, uh, had time to set up, tie up and fix ballistic plates to the fence along with a uh, supply bag, a GoPro and set himself up for the shot. That takes, I mean, if he just ran up there and did it, it would take at least five minutes to do that. But he also staged his vehicle so he could get away. So all that occurred in the perimeter, in a location where Trump was going to be. So referring to the map that Jonathan Gilliam was using, there are some holes on the golf course that run near public roads. You can park, walk across a sidewalk, through some bushes and trees, and you are right there at the fence. Trump was approaching one of those holes, and a member of his advance team saw the barrel of the rifle sticking out. He saw it, and that's when action was thankfully taken. But this gunman was able to just drive up, park, and somehow he knew that Trump would be right there. Here's more. These perimeters that are never secured, and it's local law enforcement's fault, and it's also the Secret Service's fault, but these individuals are being allowed to get within max effective range of the weapons that they choose, and that alone is suspicious to me, and it is uh, unbelievable that that can happen to Trump, who's already been shot once, uh, let alone anybody else that the Secret Service is protecting. It's just something needs to change uh, when it comes to securing the perimeters or else my suspicion is going to continue to go sky high, which it is right now. In that interview, Gilliam, who is a former special agent for the FBI, railed against the radical left, calling them a national security threat, pointing out how our children are being poisoned with radical gender ideology, our borders are wide open for killers and sex traffickers, and the gunmen that we are seeing are these radicalized, confused leftists. And it's the Democrats and the left, the ones pushing lawfare and censorship and intimidation and indoctrination, who actually say they are defending democracy. Here's Representative Michael Waltz on Newsmax. We were just brief on uh, the failures of July 13th by the Secret Service basic standard operating procedures like full coordination with local law enforcement that didn't happen, having some everyone on the same communications channels that didn't happen. But importantly, we were briefed that President Trump was now receiving the same level of protection as uh, Biden and as Kamala Harris, who are sitting president and vice president. But yet I'm already hearing from agents that that clearly wasn't the case. I'm sure we'll learn more about this gunman but what has been revealed in just the past day is already incredible. Citizen journalists are diving in because we can't trust the media. As I mentioned at the top of the show, they just totally ignore the first assassination attempt as if it never happened. This gunman is a Ukraine war advocate, a Trump hater who even called for Trump to be assassinated. How was this guy not on the FBI's radar? Or maybe he was. This is why we need Trump to clean out the deep state once and for all. All right, next let's talk about Kamala Harris. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on, 
That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about Kamala Harris because as Republicans unite behind probably the one person who actually has a chance of cleaning up the government and putting the country back in the right direction, the Democrats and media and corporate elite are trying to install an obvious idiot. Harris is a radical. She has a proven radical voting record. And at the same time, she can't put a thought together that isn't scripted and prepped. Her inclination is to radicalism. Her capacity for nuanced thought is non-existent, which makes her the ideal person to carry out the bidding of the left-wing elite. Just look at Harris as she's asked a simple question recently about her economic plan. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, yeah. what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, if, if, but a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn, you know? That entire interview is a rambling mess, but that's part of the act. I heard a great description of Harris's technique the other day, and it was presented like this. The Democrats are trying to influence dumb people and the Democrats think that dumb people think that the more someone talks, the smarter that person must be. So it's not the substance of the words that matter, clearly. It's simply the amount. But more and more people are actually paying attention to the substance. And that's why the Harris campaign is stalled out. And then, in addition to her vacuous statements, there's the pandering fake accents. And she just debuted another one. Check this out. Hello to all my divine nine brothers and sisters <laughs> and my soror. <laughs> and to all my HBCU brothers and sisters. <laughs> I mean, come on. What is that? This, of course, is a new add-on to a recent accent that she used while on the campaign trail. Giving a speech to a bunch of boring white people, Harris sounds like this. Thank unions for sick leave. Thank unions for paid family leave. Thank unions for your vacation time. However, change the audience and Harris becomes a different person. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. The level of pandering is just pathetic. And here's another kicker. The left-wing media go into a meltdown every time Trump mentions Hispanic jobs or black jobs. They imply that that's somehow racist. Yet, not only can Kamala Harris break out some fake ethnic accent to pander to voters, Joe Biden can say something just like this. With your help, in just three and a half years, we've created over two million new black jobs for black, black Americans and black... The double standard continues, but more and more Americans are awake and aware of what's going on. All right, next let's talk about the fallout from last week's presidential debate, because anything the Democrats thought they would gain has quickly evaporated. There's no doubt that the situation became impossible for Trump when it became obvious that this was a three-on-one debate. Trump was fact-checked numerous times, and ABC News was wrong on those fact-checks. At the same time, Harris was given a pass over and over again. Whether it was abortion or guns or the border, Harris lied repeatedly, but ABC News was only concerned about going after Trump. I was in New York on Newsmax this past Saturday, and I relayed what I thought were the key takeaways from the debate. Not the Harris scripted performance, but now after the dust has settled, here's what people are thinking about. And again, there were three things that came out of the debate that were just, uh, you didn't see it at first until retrospect. One is this focus on Springfield. Two is the radical nature of the Democrats on abortion because yeah. they opened that up. And three, the, the travesty of the media on a three-on-one debate. The American people see that, and this is where the left always overestimates or underestimates the reaction. They think they can put this over on the American people, and people have, are reacting differently now. 
and that they're, they're, they're just not going to have it. The censorship that we saw in 2020 that carried on to people getting blocked and banned is now we've had enough. And that was laid uh, bare for everybody to see and obvious in this debate. That's right. Through Trump's reference to the invasion of Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, we have an even stronger attention being placed on the open borders crisis being facilitated by Biden and Kamala Harris. In addition, the American people can see that it's actually the Democrats who are the, are the extremists on abortion. Harris's own running mate has overseen the deaths of eight babies who were born alive in failed abortions and were left to die. This is beyond horrific. In fact, there are just no words. And yet, this is what the Democrats stand behind. And then there's the three-on-one debate, which drives home the unfairness, double standards, and outright hostility being directed to conservatives. ABC News co-debate moderator Lindsey Davis admitted to the Los Angeles Times that part of the plan was to go after Trump with, quote, fact checks. It was Lindsey Davis who stepped in on Trump and said, quote, there's no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born, end quote. Uh, I guess she missed what's going on in Minnesota or from her Virginia governor Ralph Northam's comments. In addition, a whistleblower has now come forward from ABC News alleging that the fix was in, that there was collusion and cooperation with the Harris campaign, that she was fed questions, and that this combined team would go after Trump. Here's commentator Benny Johnson going over the affidavit of the whistleblower. Here we go. The Harris campaign imposed restrictions on the scope of questionings, including no questions regarding the perceived health of President Joe Biden, no inquiries related to a tenure as attorney general in San Francisco, no questions concerning her brother-in-law, Tony West, who faces allegations of embezzling billions of dollars, taxpayer funds may be involved in administration if elected. Uh, internal organizational climate. I have observed pronounced bias against Donald Trump at ABC News. That's is obviously, a, this is objectively true. Employees expressing favorable views towards him, significant concerns uh, and potential retribution. Additionally, for further investigation, I've secretly recorded several conversations that prove that the Harris campaign insisted not only uh, not only the fact-checking of Donald Trump, but also insisted that whatever questions were to be asked under any circumstances or else Harris campaign would decline to participate in the debate. So there's the paragraph of obviously that have brought that has brought so much speculation. Just incredible. And now Republican Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas has suggested that the Senate investigate ABC News. And former Clinton advisor Mark Penn has also called for an investigation. The American people are fed up and more are willing to come forward and call out this activity. This debate is going to end up helping Trump so much more than Harris. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show, so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Friday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.